You're watching PBS Books, and I'm your host, Jeffrey Brown. We're here at the LA Times Festival of Books. I'm joined now by Mark Bowden, whose new, uh, uh, new book is Hue 1968, A Turning Point of the American War in Vietnam. Welcome to you. Thank you, Jeff. You should, um, for some people, this is ancient history. For some people, it's as fresh as whatever, right? Yeah. Where, where, do you, where, where was it for you? I was 16. I yeah. was a sophomore in high school. Yeah. And I remember having these pitched arguments with my dad about the war in Vietnam, which yeah. he was very much uh, supporting and I was very much against. I don't think either of us knew enough to have a strong opinion, but we had strong opinions anyway. Mm -hmm. And it was really probably the first real conflict I had with my father, which is not that big a deal to the rest of the world, but it was important to me. Yeah. And it kind of set me down a road of uh, researching more, reading more about Vietnam. And when I look back on it, I think of it as a really the first step that I took toward the kind of work that I do. Really? Yeah. So, you, so this is sort of a personal journey to it this is. one. You know, yeah. it was that and, and then um, the fact that you can report in Vietnam now. So the uh, prospect of being able to write a story about a battle in Vietnam through the eyes of both Americans and Vietnamese hadn't been done to my knowledge and uh, that was one of the real attractions for me. You came from the newspaper world, right? And this right. this was a war and this was a pre even this the Tet Offensive famously covered by some wonderful reporters, right? Right. You were familiar with that history. I was, in fact, you know, but I've become more familiar <laughs> as yeah. a result of reporting this. Yeah. In fact, the, the terrific editor and journalist who hired me years ago at the Philadelphia Inquirer, Gene Roberts, was oh, the course. New York yeah. Times yeah. bureau chief. And I ran into Gene very early on in the process of researching this book. And he said, you know, hey, Mark, what you doing? And I said, I'm writing a book about the Battle of Way. And he said, I was there. <laughs> and it turns out Gene was the first American reporter, first reporter on the scene. And the reporting he did and the stories he wrote as the book um, explains were mm -hmm. tremendously important and influential. So that was kind of a, a, I ended up dedicating the book to Gene. I had no idea when I started working on it that he was involved in any way. Remind people of what way 1968 means, right? Well, you know, it, it, it was the, first of all, the biggest and bloodiest battle fought in the war in Vietnam. And when it happened during the Tet Offensive in 1968, it was, a, I think, a key factor in changing American perceptions about the war. Mm -hmm. uh, the war had been oversold to the American people as a relatively easy conflict. General Westmoreland, who was the commander, had come back in November and said the war was almost over, that the enemy was defeated. Yeah. And now suddenly they launch simultaneous attacks on every city in South Vietnam and take the third largest city in South Vietnam. Mm -hmm. They took over the city. Mm -hmm. uh, it took a month of hard fighting to, to take the city back. This was not at all what Americans had been expecting. Americans didn't even know much at that point. Or, I mean, most of the battles were smaller scale. Right. This was unusually large, right? Well, in fact, this was precisely the thing that Westmoreland had said could not happen. Right. You know, that the enemy was really only capable of launching small attacks on the far you know, reaches of the country. The cities were safe. Yeah. And the Tet Offensive showed that that was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and in particular, uh, the Battle of Hue. And, and the fact that the Battle of Hue lasted for a month, you mentioned reporting. Yeah. Uh, Americans saw daily for a month television reports, uh, newspaper reports that illustrated a battle of equal intensity to some of the battles that had been fought in Europe in World War II. Yeah. This was Seeing completely the time, off the right. scales of what right. was anticipated. Right. I'll, come back, I'll come back to the American side, but it's also one of the things you've done is talk about the Vietnamese side, North mm -hmm. Vietnamese side, Viet Cong. Right. Their strategy in this, because they, they lost the battle, right, right. in yeah. essence, but... Yeah. Well, everybody lost, yes. my estimation, but... Yeah. You know, their expectation was that they would in, ignite a general uprising throughout South Vietnam. And when they attacked Hue and other cities in South Vietnam, they anticipated falsely, incorrectly, that the people of South Vietnam would rise up in support of the revolution. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. They ended up um, basically hanging on to Hue through a very tough 
month where they took very, very heavy casualties and were eventually um, uh, uh, pushed out of the city. Mm -hmm. But, and I think, don't think, to be honest, Jeff, that they recognized uh, that they had been successful uh -huh. because they, you know, I mean, they back took, then. Back then, I mean, they yeah. took such heavy losses, their yeah. expectations for what would happen failed to occur. Um, but what they did was they uh, altered the American public's perception of the war, and more importantly, they altered the South Vietnamese uh, attitude toward the war, because I think most people in South Vietnam were neither communists nor supporters of the Saigon regime. They were waiting to see who was going to prevail. And I think prior to Tet, uh, their expectation was that the South Vietnamese government, with American support, would withstand you know, the yeah. communist effort. This brought the war home to their streets in the cities. And suddenly that bet, which was literally the kind of thing that could mean life or death, uh, was not such a clear choice anymore. So in that sense, it was tremendously beneficial for the cause of the North Vietnamese. And, and what has been that, because you went, you went there, you talked to people today, 50 years later, how does it look to them? It's very interesting. It's uh, complicated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's complicated. I mean, for the government in Hanoi, it's a triumphant victory. Right. Um, for people who were more allied with uh, uh, South Vietnam, it's a terrible tragedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is also a time when the communist troops, when they took over the city, began executing thousands of South Vietnamese citizens who were supporters of the Saigon regime. So in that sense... It's an embarrassment yeah. to the government in Hanoi, which likes to portray the what they call the American War as a war for liberation. Right. But in fact, it was a civil war, and they don't like to be reminded of that. Right. And this was a, a, a big moment in that, clearly. A big and yeah. bloody one, yeah. So, you know, we, we've been talking about sort of big things, because you can't help it, but your, your way in as a writer and as a reporter is really through these smaller stories, right? Right. I mean, my goal is not to write a historical overview of the Battle of Hue, although that's an important part. That's not your goal? No, I mean, it's, it's yeah. not. Yeah. You know, my goal is to immerse the reader in the moment, in the experience, to feel what it was like, either as a, an American Marine or as a, a Viet Cong fighter or a civilian or a kid, you know, yeah. living in Hue, uh, I like to think of this book as uh, one of those, you've seen these wonderful portraits that are assembled out of thousands of individual little pictures. And yeah. when you look really closely, you can see that each is an individual face. But when you step back, it gives you the, the overall portrait. That's really kind of what this book is. It's made up of a, it gives you an overview, but it's more concerned with all of those thousands of individual stories. So how do you do that? <laughs> you spend six years <laughs> yeah. looking at lots of pictures well, and learning you know, their stories. It's, I mean, like any other of the books that I write, mm -hmm. it's uh, part of the fun is figuring out how to do it. And I think one of my early um, decisions was that I had to really know the story of the battle cold because that was the narrative thread. And then the individual stories come in where you're fleshing out you know, say, if you break down the Battle of Hue, it was actually three separate battles that were fought. When yeah. we move into Southern Hue for one of the battles, I have all these individual stories which flesh out what was actually happening. Yeah. Is there a moment in your, I don't know if this book's different from others, but where you say, oh, now I've sort of I've got it. I mean, maybe it's a character who yeah. grabs you. Was there somebody in this case? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, and I could point to dozens. Yeah. Uh, two, real quickly, I, you know, a um, Vietnamese woman named Che Thi Mung, uh, with whom I opened the book, was 18 years old. She was a village girl. Her family had been fighting first the French, then uh, the Americans. Her, her older sister had been killed, you know, fighting for the Viet Cong. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a, a pas passionate supporter of the, of the Viet Cong. And I contrast her, for whom, I mean, for Che, the war was her life and her family. She yeah. was fighting for her family and her village. Uh, and then there's Richard Leffler, who's a guy I've gotten to know because he lives in Philadelphia, where I live, yeah. who was an 18-year-old Marine who he could, didn't even know where Vietnam was, didn't even know how to pronounce Hue. He thought it was Hue. Yeah. And uh, he ends up deposited in the middle of this battle 
clueless and terrified and, and actually ends up in a hole in fetal position crying. Uh, uh-huh. So, I mean, it's, it's such a stark uh, contrast, those two characters. Those are just two of hundreds. But when you meet these people and listen to them, you know, tell of, of their experiences, you, uh, you get a, a connection, I think, to what really happened. This, I mean, it really was a uh, hand-to-hand horrible experience, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. they say in Hui, there's a dead person beneath every city block of cement, you know, as you walk down the sidewalk. Yeah. It, more than 10,000 civilians were killed in the Battle of Hui and thousands of combatants. So it was a, a nightmare of an experience, but a tremendously important moment yeah. in what the Vietnamese call the American War. What about for you uh, going in? Where, I mean, we started by talking about you as a 16-year-old arguing with your father. Right. Were there surprises once you went back as an adult, as an author? And what yeah. surprised you most? Uh, well, I think, um, I think what always surprises me, and I've written other books about war, is how young uh, the participants were yeah. and you know how idealistic uh, they were, many of them, mm-hmm. both Americans and Vietnamese. And I think one of the uh, essential features of a really powerful drama or story is when it's hard for you as the reader or the audience to decide who's right and who's wrong. You can feel the passion. You can understand the reasons why you know, this combat yeah. is taking place. But it's hard to say, you know, which side is is the right side. So, you know, that was one of the things that it, it, I find often when you dig deeply into stories, uh, figuring out or understanding why things are happening the way they are is a lot harder than you might think. Where do you think? I mean, it's 50 years, right? Ken Burns just had the got, got another big moment. Your book. People thinking about this. I was recently at an event in Washington with Maya Lin, just talking about the, you know, the wall, yeah, and the pain of that, and the and just the waves of how people have have thought about the war and about the people who fought it. Yeah. Where do you think we are? Well, we're definitely at a point, and this is one of the things I was really glad to discover 50 years on, where you can write honestly about what happened without necessarily falling into one camp or the other. Everyone seems to be... 50 is enough? 50 is enough. People seem (laughs) to be ready to entertain that uh, uh, way of looking at it. But I think increasingly history is judging the Vietnam War as a tragic and terrible error in judgment by the United States and and just an unbelievable waste of life and uh, heartbreaking patriotism and loyalty sacrifice for really no good reason. Yeah. Um, I think that's the sad legacy of the, of the war. Is 50 years, I mean, I'm just thinking about you starting as a daily journalist and now writing these big histories. 50 years is a kind of a good place? It's a you sweet, still have some, I call it a like, sweet spot, you know, yeah. because uh, if you go much further back in history, you're stuck in the archives. Yeah. Uh, when you go 50 years, you still have enough participants around. You could do my job, which is find people, listen to them, ask them questions, yeah. and learn. Yeah. And so you like the mix of doing both. I do. You know, I, I don't think I'll probably go any further back in history because I, the thing I'm good at, I think, and the thing that I most enjoy is meeting people and t- hearing them tell their stories. All right, the book is Way, 1968, A Turning Point of the American War in Vietnam, Mark Bowden. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff.